First thing we gotta do is hit the OK button. Do not use while driving. Now that we're on the main menu, I'm gonna teach you how to navigate through the different menus. First of all, the outside knob is actually a clicker and you can go ahead and click through all of the screens. The next part is, is your home button. That will always take you back to this main screen. Um, this is a touch screen, so once you pick a um, menu that you want to enter, you can go ahead, touch it, and it will take you to that menu. When you want to go into the next menu, go ahead and click it again. Once you get to a settings page menu, you can use the outside knob to go and change your setting. You can swipe right to go to the next menu, which this is the rear shock, and the same thing, we can adjust that way. And if you wanna go back up one level, basically just swipe down and it takes you up to the next level. And when you wanna get back to the home screen, you can just always hit the home button. Now we're gonna go and take it from manual mode and put it into active mode. I'm gonna go ahead and mode button and we're gonna pick trail mode. To go back to the main menu, hit there. Now that we have it in trail active mode, we can choose what we wanna have on the display screen. There are three options. The first one is a shock output, and we have a little display to make this change, but basically each number replicates how stiff that shock is. So right now this right rear shock is displaying a six, seven, and now it's a 10. 10 being the most stiff and zero being soft. The next display menu is the tilt and roll. This way, no matter where you're at, what you're doing, you can see the actual angle of your Jeep, whether you're going down a steep hill or actually climbing a hill, or if you're on a roll angle, you'll know the true value and the true angle of your Jeep. And finally, the vehicle speed, um, which is corrected with wheel size through one of our other settings. If you do want it in kilometers, you can simply click that button and it will change it to kilometers per hour. Now let's talk about the system settings. These are really only used during initial setup, but we need to go through them today. We're gonna to go ahead and click on that. The first one and most important is your screensaver. You can pick the vehicle pitch and roll angles, the shock output, or vehicle speed. Another nice feature, you can go and select the time that you want it to come on, anywhere from five minutes to 0.25 of a minute. Um, as you're driving, as soon as you're done making a selection, it, the screensaver will go back to the default screen that you choose. Another great option is the vehicle speed is corrected from your wheel size. So if your stock vehicle came with 33s and you've upgraded to 37s like we have, you just go and say you have a 37 inch wheel and it'll correct the vehicle speed. Now a lot of people will flash their stock motor ECUs and that will correct it. There's a lot of different ways doing that. So if you do go and flash your um, OE motor ECU, you probably want to just leave this in the stock position. The next great feature about active is rear load. Sometimes you'll be hauling a trailer, you might have a bunch of camping gear in the back and you're gonna be heavier. This is a special feature that changes the algorithm to compensate for the extra load in just the rear end and adjust the suspension accordingly. Finally, the brightness. Um, you can actually go and change the screen brightness. So if it's night and it's just a little bit too bright, it's one click of a button and you can adjust it to where you like this. Now we're gonna talk about the pro menu. If you go to the fine tune settings selection again, and we're gonna hit pro. With pro, it takes every aspect of how the vehicle works and now you can fine tune how the ECU is thinking and sending the commands to the shocks to customize your ride completely. The first one I wanna talk about is pitch sensitivity. You can obviously make it less or more. So if you want the suspension to compensate a lot, like if you're going down a hill, make your front end a lot more stiffer, then you can go and add to it. If you don't want that much compensation, you can take away. We're gonna actually go. The next one is roll sensitivity. 
if you're on an angle and your one side's lower and you want those shocks to get a lot stiffer to help balance out the vehicle, you can go ahead and add to it. Otherwise, you can take away. All of this is completely tunable. Turn sensitivity. As you're turning, the outside shocks get stiffer and the inside shocks get softer. You can go and pick the exact amount of compensation you want to tailor your ride. Throttle sensitivity. This doesn't affect the vehicle's throttle motor performance. All this does is affect how much compensation that the rear shocks get stiffer as you're accelerating hard. If you want less, um, less body roll or you want the rear end to dive less under acceleration, you can give it more force. If you want less, then you can make that so it's less sensitive. Finally, brake sensitivity. With brake sensitivity, it does not affect your braking, but what it does do is it affects how much compensation it has when you are braking. So if you're aggressive, racing type mindset of driving, you're gonna probably wanna turn this up. If you are on your brakes a lot and um, are more a slow braker, then you can turn this down and make it so it has less impact on your suspension. That concludes our tutorial on how the SDI eClick controller works. There's also a PDF available. Please go visit sdiracing.com.